Back in Shibuya. Does this mean that bastard Natsume is kicking it somewhere inside? I'd like to say we should just bust our way in, but how does it look, Sophie? It looks like it's still locked. We'll need someone to touch it so we can hear the voices in his heart. Okay then, you're up, Skull. Uh huh. Well, it looks like it's gonna hurt, and it doesn't seem right to ask Sophie to do it. Oh, but it's cool if I do it? Oh, come on, Skull. You're, you know, tough. And he's already experienced it once before. If anything, he's the ideal candidate. <sighs> Just my luck, I guess. At least buy me a bowl of ramen or something once we're done, yeah? I could do it if you want. It's cool. I got it. Thank you, Skull. Hey, you'd think someone his age would have at least some talent. <laughs> like it matters. This kid's gonna make us a fortune. Yeah, I'm hearing voices all right. These voices are somehow related to Natsume's emotional scars? Most likely. We just need to listen to the conversation and figure out the source of his trauma from there. So we're looking for something like what Shujin Academy was to Alice. We should keep listening. There's bound to be some sort of clue here. <laughs> Sir, try to keep your voice down. He'll be back any minute. Oh, come off it. Can you really blame me for complaining? I'm the one who has to read his crap every day. Uh, the kid's got motivation, but that's about all he's got. 
Seems any talent for writing in that family died with his grandfather. Oh, excuse me, can I get another Gatorade coffee? Yes, sir, just a moment. Well, he's still our little money tree. No way in hell we're letting him go. <laughs> You're terrible, sir. What's... what's going on here? Ow! Damn, this shit hurts. Thanks to that, however, we've managed to hear a good amount. I didn't really get it, but uh, it sounded like some kind of cafe. Indeed. I heard one of them say Gatore Coffee. Right. Gatore is the name of a cafe chain. But I don't think I saw any around Sendai Station. If there aren't a lot of them, it'll make finding the right one that much easier. Well, at the very least, we've got a lead on finding the trauma room now. Right. Let's get out of here and find us a coffee shop. All right, we're on the hunt for a Gatore coffee. First, let's find out how many are in the area. Gatore coffee. Got it. There's only one that's close to Sendai Station. Whoa, that was fast. It's a bit of a walk, but I'll be happy to guide you to the destination. You're amazing, Sophia. It's like you were made to be a navigator. Ugh, but being the navigator's my job. Where's that coming from? It's simply a question of having the right person for the right job. Fear not, Futaba. There are plenty of things only you can do. like a weirdo quite like you do, Inari. Who are you calling a weirdo? All right, I guess we'll just head over to the cafe then, yeah? Yeah, let's get going. Okay, I got it. This is it. Gatori coffee. I can smell the coffee. Seems to be just an ordinary cafe. Are we sure we have the right place? We'll just have to put in the keyword and see. All right, let's make it happen. The trauma cell's calling our names. Trauma cell? It's just a name I came up with. Trauma room sounds like some kind of cheesy hospital drama. Whatever you want, we gotta roll. The key to opening that birdcage has gotta be here somewhere. Do you remember the keyword? Of course. It's Prince of Nightmares. just like what happened in Shibuya. This is where Natsume's trauma comes from. What could have happened to him, I wonder? Shh. Someone's up ahead. Uh, are you sure about this? Awarding him the grand prize for that? Ongo Natsume. <laughs> the kid's entered every contest, but he's never made it past the first stage. He's as stubborn as he is incompetent. What's more, his writing is so painfully generic, it only becomes more obvious when you compare it to the other candidates. What? That voice... is it not Sume? It can't be... acknowledged my work. It's fine. He's the great Sogo Natsume's grandson, remember? Brand recognition is a huge part of marketability. Nobody gives a rat's ass about what's beyond the cover. Though a certain someone seems to think he's actually worth a damn. Poor kid can't even see just how hopeless he really is. <laughs> Seriously, it's been <pathetic. laughs> Oh, I'm trying as hard as I can. No skin off my nose, so long as he keeps raking it in. We hit the jackpot with that one. And I plan on riding him straight to the top. 
and if he does by some miracle make something decent of himself, well then everyone wins, right? <laughs> These guys are the worst. Here it comes. Right on. Talipus hack like you was hopeless. Hopeless! Hopeless! This is the same thing we saw in Shibuya. Careful! It's using different weapons from last time. <laughs> <laughs> Inside the birdcage now, right? Better get going then. Wait, but what was that we just saw? It seems Ango Natsume wasn't given that award on his own merit. Those editors just used him for his name. So, there was a secret behind that novel after all. But he's not a bad guy, is he? It sounded like he entered the competition a whole bunch of times. And just when he thought his hard work was paying off, he had to hear all that. It must have been devastating. Those editors are horrible. They knew his writing wasn't good enough, but they still gave him the prize just so they could make money. It still doesn't justify what he's doing now. Nevertheless, I'm beginning to understand how he feels. Fox? Rising to fame atop stolen ideas, pulling at people's emotions with a fabricated story. Even worse, robbing others of their free will, changing their hearts, and wallowing in his own vanity. These crimes are unforgivable. There's no denying that he's been a fool. And yet, in spite of all that, it doesn't change the fact that Natsume spent years giving it everything he had. Creative work is often a lonely endeavor. And battling against that loneliness is truly a challenge in and of itself. As if it wasn't hard enough, if you don't produce results, no one will even think twice about you. You might even begin to think that such dark and unfulfilling times are all that's in store. Had I taken one wrong step, I may very well have turned out to be just as hideous as me. Inari. It's thanks to your friendship that I didn't stray from the path. He, however, doesn't seem to have anyone. Atsume should know better than most that there's no meaning in superficial glory. Now he's turned his back on what he truly wants to write for the sake of spinning this infernal novel of lies. Someone needs to bring him back to his senses. You seem pretty motivated this time around, Inari. As one who's dedicated his life to art, I simply cannot condone his actions. Now, let us bring this to an end. We'll send the calling card, then wrest the Overlord from his throne. Okay, all that's left is the calling card. Right. We need to make Natsume aware that we're coming to steal the desire should materialize them. We'll need to decide how we want to do it. What's the best way to make sure he gets the message? Huh. He probably remembers our faces, though. I doubt he'd take anything from us. Hmm. What do we do? Bobby! He 
could be lost, maybe? I'll go take a look. Hey, what's wrong, kid? Oh, you got separated from your mom, huh? Don't worry, I got you. Is that Zenkichi? What? Ramsu's already here? Hey, it's me. I got a kid who was separated from his mom here. Send someone over to look after him, would ya? I'm over it. Huh? What do you mean it's not worth Puff Sex time? Quit screwing around. You call yourself an officer of the law? Or are you saying you'd abandon your own kid too, is that it? A lost kid's no joke, you know. <laughs> hey, wait, where are you going? It's okay, I'm not gonna hurt you or anything. Uh, the kid totally thinks he's a creep. That kid sure made things difficult. He didn't have to run away like that, right? Right? You're not exactly cute and cuddly, Gramps. Honestly, I don't blame him. Will you stop calling me Gramps? This is perfect timing, though, actually. Let's ask Zenkiji what he thinks. Sure. We're supposed to be working together anyway. We're all set to go inside Natsume's jail. There's just one thing left to do. Only problem is, we're not sure how to send our calling card. Calling card? Oh, you mean that thing you guys did with the screens in Shibuya? If you want my advice, you should avoid any high-profile stuff like that. The police aren't that stupid. Eventually you'll get caught. I know I'm supposed to help you and all, but I gotta draw the line at breaking the law. Hmm, so the adult's the voice of reason here. You really are a Gramps, you know that? <sighs> You're pretty set on calling me that, aren't you? Whatever. My point is, go with something simpler. We need a way to guarantee that Natsume will read the calling card. Maybe if we knew where he was going to be, we could set something up before he arrived. In that case, I found just the event. Natsume is holding another book signing at the bookstore near the station. Natsume will most certainly be there. It starts as soon as the store opens at 10 a.m. Oh, that sounds doable. I bet it'd be easy to set up if we roll in at night. Hey, didn't you hear what I said? Breaking and entering's a crime, you know? Well, that's where you come in, Gramps. Huh? and got caught, they'd lock us up. They'd lock me up, too! You saying you can't do it? <sighs> Some help the police turned out to be. Wasn't the deal that you'd cooperate with us? I thought adults kept their word. <sighs> you kids. All right, it's settled. I will go and prepare the calling card. Yeah, you got this, Yusuke. That goes for you, too, Zenkichi. We'll leave the planning to you. Am I seriously going to go through with this? Uh, uh, Mr. Natsume. Good morning. I see there's quite a crowd today as well. Uh, yes, about that. What is it? What? What is this? Well, when the staff came to open the store this morning, it was already like this. They called the police, but they were told to leave it as is, to preserve the crime scene. To the ostentatious swindler, Mr. Ango Natsume. You are a depraved miscreant who holds others in contempt and steals their work, lining your own pockets all the while. We refuse to overlook the crimes you commit as you wear a false crown. Tonight, we take back the desires you've stolen. <laughs> Honestly, how stupid can you get? Damn it, what nonsense! I am the monarch. My followers are loyal. 
That is, as long as I hold their desires. No. Having those desires is proof of my claim to power. Proof of my sovereignty! I won't hand them over. I won't give them up! You foolish heroes are nothing but talk. Come then, I'll crush every last one of you! All right, his cognition should be changed now. And thank you for all your help, Mr. Detective. <sighs> and with that, I've officially become an accomplice of the Phantom Thieves. What are you complaining about? You're the one who proposed working with us, remember? As a reward, I'll try to start calling you Zenkichi instead of Gramps from now on, okay? Inspector Hasegawa is quite a mouthful. Yeah, Zenkichi's good, don't you think? Okay, then. From now on, you're Zenkichi-san, all right? I'm looking forward to working together, Zenkichi. Oh, fine, whatever. You've already dragged me along this far, kid. Now then, the desire should have materialized at this point. It's up to us to take them back and return them to their rightful owners. And in doing so, we'll set his distorted heart straight. the Overlord from Prince of Nightmares. He certainly gives off that impression, but weren't the Fearsome Four just dressed like normal people? Yeah, thinking about it, those guys didn't get much love from the author, did they? <laughs> you come all this way only to fall right into my trap. This world belongs to me and me alone. It takes shape solely according to my design. Here, the Overlord reigns justice upon the holier-than-thou heroes who would dare brand him as evil. Here you are nothing more than flies to be swatted. I'll enjoy hearing those filthy screams as you atone for your transgressions. That's bold for someone who stole others' desires just to satisfy their own selfish wants. Yeah, if you're really the Overlord, ain't this the part where you get your ass kicked? <laughs> Tell me, how many of my demon brethren have you slaughtered while spouting such despicable hypocrisies? Wow, this guy's reading right from the handbook, isn't he? Enough of this. It's time we fought. No matter how brave a facade you put on, it's clear you're just afraid of losing that hollow throne you're so proud of. What was that? Your reign is not but an illusion. Allow us to show you the truth! <laughs> I'm sick and tired of everyone looking down on me! <laughs> yes, the time has come for my true power! You wretched shall witness my final form! Be careful, guys! The 
This one's really tough! Hey, he's writing something! Identity was just a cheap imitation. It's over, Ango Natsume. You're just a bunch of stupid kids! You don't know how much I've suffered! It's not too late for me! I've still got my reputation as a writer! I've won an award! I've sold books! It's not too late! It's never too late! And that's good enough for you? <laughs> This fame you've acquired through deception and the brainwashing of others. Is that truly what you wanted? What was the real reason you started writing novels? I... I mean, I... Damn it! Damn it! I tried. I really tried. Just like everyone else. I read and read all through the night. Hours on end, like my life depended on it. And for what? Nothing I wrote was ever mine. It was just another work from Soko Natsume's grandson. No one, no one ever acknowledged my effort. My effort, not my work, not even me. No matter where I look. All I see is a bunch of thoughtless idiots, slaves to appearances, and nothing more. Acknowledge me, damn it! Acknowledge Ango Natsume's efforts for once. I just want someone to see that I really try. I do. Huh? It's very clear just how much work you've put into writing your novels. Life led by creativity is almost always a lonely one, no matter your profession. You were battling that loneliness. You braced yourself, pouring your very soul into your writing, 
bringing it to your publisher time and time again. I will gladly acknowledge such effort and determination. <laughs> there are many out there who would give up that battle, even those of exceptional skill and creativity. To be able to continuously bring life to new works without giving up, however, that is perhaps the most exceptional talent of all. There was once a time when you kept fighting. That is one part of your career that could never be labeled a fabrication. So start over, Ango Natsume. Claw your way back up from nothing and move forward. After all, there are some things that simply cannot be painted without a blank canvas. <laughs> it is because everyone believed in me that I was able to choose the path I walk today. I stopped lying to myself and was able to begin anew. So it is now my turn to pay it forward. Even if I'm the only one in the world to do so, I will believe in you. <sighs> Stupid kid. Talking my damn ear off. But... You're right. This identity of mine was built on nothing but lies. I don't need it anymore! I'll do it. I'll climb my way back up. And I'll do it on my own strength! I'll write a novel that'll capture the hearts of countless readers, just like my grandfather before me. I'll write something I can be proud of. To everyone! I swear it! Good. And I'll be looking forward to the day I get to read it. <laughs> you know, I really am stupid. How did I let myself forget? I know now what it is I really wanted. Come on, we're leaving! Oh, looks like it's over for now. Mission complete. I wonder if everyone's desires have been returned yet. Probably. They all went flying out of the cage, after all. Maybe we should check on the people back in town, just to be safe. Good idea. That said, the jail didn't disappear this time, either. Now I'm sure of it. Jails really aren't the same as palaces. Well, we can worry about it later. Indeed. Let's go. I'm restless right now. Do you know what this is? I'm not sure what's wrong. Natsumi tried his hardest, but somewhere along the way, he lost sight of what mattered to him. He is a strange person, Natsume. Yes. He did say he would climb back up. Yusuke said Natsume lost his way because he was alone. Whenever I think about that, I feel restless inside. Even though Natsume hurt a lot of people and was, for some time, one of our enemies. What is this feeling? The same as Yusuke? I see. So that's why Yusuke saved Natsume. It was because Natsume's reason for doing all those terrible things was really sad. I think I understand now. Sadness can hurt people, but it can also save them. It can give humans a reason to support one another. You can count on me. <laughs> okay, we should probably get going.
So, you know how I was all excited for the Tanabata festival that's coming up? My boyfriend says he's already got plans. Oh, by the way, did you ever finish reading that manga I lent you? I got someone else who wants to bow. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I think it worked. Yeah. Doesn't look like anyone's talking about Natsume anymore. Then, all's as it should be. Obtaining fame through some deceptive power doesn't fit his image. This wouldn't have been possible without you being there to open his eyes, Yusuke. You really took charge today, Inari. Yep, it was all thanks to the divine grace of the oh-so-benevolent Inari. Praise be to him. Thank you. However, we're not finished just yet. We must confirm whether the change of heart was a success. For now, we'll just have to wait and see how things turn out. Oh. Well, since we've got some free time, can we unwind at a bathhouse or something? Oh, I'm totally beat. Good idea. We can freshen up a little before we head back to the car. You heard him, Sophia. It's all you. Okay, I'll find the best bathhouse in the area.